Good morning and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room where we're joined today by Yuri Gennart Ramirez who is the Expedition 40 lead scientist. She actually joined us um, at the beginning of Expedition 40 and told us about all the science that is uh, was at that time coming up for the crew on board the station and now she's back to tell us what the crew accomplished while they have been in space for about uh, six months for the three that are leaving tomorrow. Thanks so much for coming back. And thanks for having me, Brandy. It's been a very exciting expedition uh, to be able to be part of it. Well, it definitely seems like the crew spent a lot of time on science. Can you tell us some of the highlights of what they've done? We have been um, doing, of course, a variety of science, all the way from uh, cellular biology, uh, technology type of investigations, uh, combustion. Um, human research, of course, never stops with our, our crew members being our main subjects there as well. Uh, one of the very interesting activities we were able to witness and, and a privilege for my, from my perspective to be part of is to see an investigation come to a conclusion uh, in the sense of the data acquisition. So, uh, for example, with spinal ultrasound, uh, we had crew members that had just returned at the beginning of, of our Expedition 40 uh, with the prior crew members. Okay, so they've been in space before and we're back. And they departed, and, and when they departed, uh, they go through the post-data collection uh, when they, they get back to the ground. Okay. And spinal ultrasound was one of those investigations where we were able to say, yes, we got the last subject for this investigation, and we called it um, complete. Uh, in, in our ESA counterparts, we had a very similar uh, situation as well with the, the previous crew members that returned. Uh, that I'm talking about our U.S. crew members, Wakata and Mastraki, on the previous uh, return. Uh, and again, through, uh, as we were kicking off our Expedition 40, the, the crew on the ground, the teams on the ground, the scientists are collecting the final data points for reversible figures, uh, an ESA investigation that's also human research uh, related in terms of the vision and how that affects your ability to see in, in 3Ds um, in space, uh, which was also completed uh, uh, with the, the, ba the final collections. Uh, so that, that's always a very uh, exciting opportunity to see that come to a, a closure of sorts, of course. These experiments go on for a long time, so it's not always uh, not always uh, easy to see the end of, of, of them, I'm sure. That's correct. So being able, uh, being able to be a, a part of that closure is always a, a very exciting for us. Well, can you tell us a little bit about how, like we said, this crew spent a lot of time on science. How does it compare in number of hours to some of the past uh, expeditions? So we, um, uh, this is one of those moments where you go back uh, after after you've been through the six-month course and, and you see that we were able to to accomplish a lot of objectives. Um, when you look at uh, crew, crew hours are certainly one me way of measuring it. Of course, uh, there's many different ways of looking at all the science objectives that get accomplished, but uh, we were very fortunate to be able to uh, meet all the hours that we had originally planned for the increment and go a little bit beyond that. Uh, and we also were uh, fortunate to be able to get in, be in a position where all the teams came together and we uh, were able to break the, the number of hours in one week. Oh, wow. Dedicated to utilization of over 38 hours in one week. Uh, I'm sorry, 83 hours in one week. That's a lot. It is a lot. And, and, and this comes the part where the entire team, not just the scientists and, and all of the different control centers, international partners, everybody uh, helps make it happen, as well as uh, the flight control team here and the engineering community and everybody that is, is behind it. So that that really is a testament to, to the entire team. And being able to keep the station going while they're doing all this science, I'm sure, is not always the, the easiest task. Exactly. We have had uh, uh, some challenges uh, in terms of systems uh, that, that the teams have had to maneuver through, and, and with all that, we've been able to accomplish all the science, so that is the, the remarkable part uh, as well as part of it. Well, I know on top of um, kind of the regular things that we think of as science, there were also a couple of American technology unit demonstrations during the past few months, you know, that legs for Robonaut and, and a few other things. Why don't you tell us about that? We Yes, we are Robonaut, we were able to, to kick off that augment if you would, uh, where we went and did a lot of the mobility upgrades, and it it culminated in the legs, the installation of the legs. Uh, but behind that, there was almost a robotic brain surgery going on when they were uh, we had our crew members going through and and rewire per se the the robonaut so that it can eventually become mobile. Uh, and we will be uh, wait, waiting for the backpack to come in so that he can continue with with some of those demonstrations as well, but it was a big overhaul of the Robonaut and, and a big surgery and technology behind that and, and finally uh, the leg attachment. 
and hopefully we'll be seeing a little bit more work from Robinaut in the coming months. Uh, yes, I, I think uh, it's, it's probably in the plans for the next uh, few expeditions. Uh, what, what about, um, I know there was a, the, the veggie greenhouse that we got a crop from. Um, how, how has that started looking? That was another uh, very successful demonstration. Uh, it was a twofold objective to, to demonstrate the facility in itself, the veggie facility, uh, and its ability to grow uh, plants. Uh, and we had our, our Veg01 investigation where we were able to grow uh, romaine lettuce, uh, red romaine lettuce, and you can Look see some, some of, that of those. Uh, yes, and, and they had a, they were having a competition between the ground teams and, of course, our con ground controls and, and the crew on board. I think Steve spent a lot of time uh, growing that that led us very successfully, and uh, we will return samples in a future mission, and the teams will be able to analyze that and, and continue to tweak the, the processes by which we grow um, all different kinds of, of plants on space. Okay. All right. Well, in addition to all of the, the new experiments and science that we saw, there were also some, some old favorites, I guess, that, it, that we're seeing again and again, like bass and spears. How are, how are those going? We did uh, extremely well. We were able to, to recover from uh, some of the situations in coming through with the Bass Experiment uh, facility and, and continue through a variety of the fuel uh, samples that we were burning uh, and different The crew, materials. I think, did some maintenance and, and looked into some, some issues with the, the igniter, was it? Uh, it was a door that we had to repair door, the door, okay. uh, and we fixed that successfully and were able to, to continue the study of, of suppressing fire um, and how different kinds of fuels burn and different flow rates and how that affects the, that burning process. So clearly it's something that we need to continue to investigate for, for fire safety in the future. And those are really interesting uh, to watch from here on the ground as well, as is spheres, which uh, we're seeing a little bit of today. So That's right. The spheres uh, slosh, uh, as you mentioned earlier, it, it is a, a, an investigation to see how the liquids will move inside containers and uh, one of the very direct applications we could have uh, for for propulsion systems is for those liquid propul propulsion systems so we can understand that slosh um, effect as uh, tanks are going into uh, microgravity. and Liquid you know. moves a little different in microgravity, and this helps us understand that. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you again. Um, I guess before you go, I know it's, it's not going to be... Um, you're not going to be the lead for the next one, but maybe you can give us a, a quick uh, preview of what we'll see in for Expedition 41. Yeah, I'm sure you will have uh, our, our the next uh, lead increment scientist, uh, Vic Cooley, uh, will probably be uh, stopping by uh, in the next week or so. But uh, very quickly, I know we have a lot of things in store, not only to continue a lot of the human research investigations we've started, um, but also um, we'll be able to look at SpaceX 4 coming up, which will bring a lot of exciting uh, investigations like rodent research with it and some other plant gravity sensing kind of uh, investigations. All right. We'll be sure and ask Vic about those when he's visiting with us. Thanks again for coming back. This again was uh, Yuri Gennart Ramirez, the lead Expedition 40 scientist, uh, giving us a wrap-up of what the crew has been up to for the past six months.